The birds, or aves, are a class of terrestrial vertebrates, or tetrapods. Like most extant tetrapods, they have four limbs, but they have modified the anterior pair into wings. All modern birds are covered in feathers and lack true teeth on the jaws. The mouth bones are highly modified into a bill covered in a keratin beak, or ranthotheca. Birds live on every continent. They are the only surviving group of dinosaurs within the clade Sauropsida. They are diapsid amniotes, and their closest modern relatives are crocodiles. From a cladistic perspective, birds are therefore a highly successful group of reptiles. Our first preparation for this video is the European or common quail, Coternix coternix. This is a Phasanid Old World quail, and is not closely related to American quails in the family Odontophoridae. The common quail is found in almost all of Europe, and it is the smallest native galliform bird in this area. Quails are ground birds and breed in dry meadows, arable land, steppes, or loose bushland. The opening of the cloaca is clearly visible from the outside. The feathers of the wing have specific names. The wing is divided into two sections, proximal and distal to the bend of the wrist. On the proximal portion, the small anterior feathers are coverts, and the long trailing edge feathers are secondaries, with some very proximal feathers being tertials. On the distal portion, anteriorly, a small set of allula feathers sit atop the primary coverts, which lie atop the long primaries. To begin the dissection, the quail is pinned to the dissecting dish with needles. Now, the external features can be examined more closely. The eyes of birds are usually relatively large and play an important role in orientation and behavior. Birds have two sets of eyelids. The outer eyelids, closing up and down, and the inner, transparent, nictitating membrane, closing from front to back. The ear canal is generally hidden. A look into the beak is also worthwhile. All recent birds lack teeth. The tongue is usually narrow and hard, and most birds have fairly poor smell and taste. The palate, coanae, tongue, and glottis can be seen in the oral cavity. For the preparation of the internal organs, the feathers must first be plucked. With the fine down feathers, it is advisable to do this underwater, as they can easily float through the air. The skin in the throat area and in the area above the cloaca can usually be carefully torn open by hand. This is preferable to cutting open these regions, as it can prevent accidental deep incisions. The remaining skin of small birds can also be separated by hand. However, fine scissors should be used to cut the skin in the chest and stomach area of larger birds. The powerful pectoralis chest muscle rests on the sternum. These muscles pull the wing down. The supracoracoideus, which raises the wing, sits dorsal to the pectoralis and is thus currently hidden. 
In addition, the sternum and the crop are now recognizable. The sternum of birds is very large and broad. In all flighted birds, it has an extensive crest, the carina sterni, from which the flight muscles arise. In most birds, the esophagus expands to form a crop, which serves as a reservoir for the ingested food, and in some birds can produce a nutrient-rich secretion called crop milk during the breeding season. One of the two chest muscles on the right or left is now cut off along the carina sterni. It is important not to cut too deeply so as not to injure the internal organs. Depending on the size of the preparation object, both muscles, and then the sternum, are removed. In order to separate the individual organs from one another, the connecting mesenteries must be carefully loosened with the hands, scissors, or a probe. The prepared abdominal cavity now reveals the crop, liver, large and small intestines, as well as the gizzard, and the small green gallbladder, the latter of which is lacking in some birds. The stomach is divided into the anterior glandular stomach and the posterior gizzard. When the individual organs are exposed, the individual parts of the digestive system, especially the intestine, can be easily recognized. At the transition from the small intestine to the rectum, there are two cecae. These can be very long in ducks and their allies, the anseriforms, and chickens and theirs, the galliforms. In pigeons, columbiforms, however, they are only a few centimeters long. They are completely absent in cranes and their allies, the gruiforms. The kidneys are large, compact, mostly three-lobed structures close to the spine. Their secretions flow separately into the cloaca. The renal pelvis urinary bladder, and urethra are generally absent from most adult birds. The trachea is often very long, and in addition to the actual larynx, there is a uniquely avian vocal organ, the syrinx, which lies at the transition point between the trachea and the two bronchi. Unlike mammals, birds do not produce sounds with the larynx, but with the syrinx. In order to expose the heart, an incision is now made anteriorly on the remaining part of the sternum. The heart is now dissected out together with the trachea. To do this, the emerging vessels are carefully cut with scissors. The cardiovascular system of birds is more complex than that of squamates. There are four chambers, and the systemic and pulmonary circulation are completely separated from each other, as the septa between the two atria of the heart and the two ventricles are completely closed. The aorta is formed by the right aortic arch.
The left half pumps the blood through the systemic circulation, bringing the oxygen to the rest of the body. The right half of the heart pumps blood through the pulmonary circulation, which oxygenates the blood. The two circuits are connected in series so that all of the blood flows through the pulmonary system. In the pulmonary circulation, the blood leaves the right ventricle via the pulmonary artery towards the lungs, where it is enriched with oxygen. Then it is pumped into the left atrium from the pulmonary vein. It goes from the left atrium to the left ventricle, from whence it is pumped through the aorta into the body's circulation. While in mammals the aorta runs on the left side of the body, in birds it is on the right side of the body. After the organs have been supplied, the blood enriched with carbon dioxide returns through the upper and lower vena cava into the right atrium. When the blood enters the right ventricle from the right atrium, the cycle begins again. The second preparation object is the female domestic chicken, Gallus gallus domesticus, another pheasanid galliform bird. Here we are dissecting a Rhode Island red chicken, a farm chicken breed that was bred for laying performance. The body is covered in two types of feathers. The surface has larger, stiff, cover or contour feathers, while beneath it lie crinkled, small, soft, down feathers. The specimen is now placed in a dissecting dish and the feathers are plucked until the abdominal area is completely free of feathers and ready for preparation. The skin is then lifted with tweezers and cut open with scissors and we make a sagittal incision. Now you have the pectoral muscles on the right and left, and the short sternum. The epidermis shows the position of the feathers in the skin. These goose bumps are the exit points of the feathers, which are formed by the epidermis and are made of keratin. The other preparation steps for opening the abdominal cavity are the same as for the first preparation object.
The individual organs, especially those of the digestive tract, can now be separated from one another by detaching the mesenteries. These organs can be separated and removed for a further detailed examination. To do this, carefully cut off the supplying vessels of the organs with scissors and loosen the mesenteries. The gizzard is an organ with thick muscles in the digestive tract of birds and crocodilians. An analogous but not homologous structure is also present in some fish and even invertebrates such as cockroaches or crustaceans. A distinct gizzard is found mainly in herbivorous birds, especially grain eaters. The gizzard serves to chop up the food and thus also as a kind of substitute for the chewing carried out in other animal groups with chewing teeth. The gizzard is equipped with hard parts, such as friction plates or grinding teeth, and in some cases, stomach stones. The gizzard of birds is lined with the gastric mucosa. There is a submucosal membrane underneath, followed by the actual muscle layer. Its wall consists mainly of smooth muscles. Once the digestive tract has been removed and laid out, the genital organs of the preparation object can be identified. In the female bird, the hen, the oviduct becomes visible. In birds, the oviduct is the section of the female sexual organs in which the finished egg is produced around the yolk sphere and transported to the outside by the cloaca. The oviduct is a stretchable, often muscular tube that runs in loops. In the domestic chicken, it takes around 24 hours for an egg to pass along the oviduct, 20 hours of which consists of shell formation. The shape of the oviduct changes depending on whether the bird can be fertilized or not. During the laying period, the oviduct increases in size by up to 50 times its volume and, in the case of domestic fowl, reaches a length of up to 86 centimeters and a diameter of 1.3 centimeters. The oviduct's wide ostium accommodates the large, yolk-rich egg cells, and here, in the infundibulum, they are also fertilized. The egg is slowly pushed down by the glands of the oviduct's wall and provided with a protein coat, then with a thin flaky skin, and finally with a shell in the uterus. In the meantime, the egg cell has already gone through cleavage and embryonic development has started. Further development takes place under the influence of the heat generated during incubation. Coloration is often imparted to the egg by glands of the uterus. The oviduct develops from paramesonephric ducts in the embryo.
It is originally paired, but the right pair degenerates embryonically so that only the left-hand oviduct is formed. It is divided into five sections. The first part is the infundibulum, where fertilization takes place. Second is the magnum, where the egg is formed. The third part is the isthmus, where the shell skin is formed. The fourth part is the uterus. This is where the calcareous shell is formed and the egg development is finished. The fifth part is the muscular vagina. Here, the cuticle is added to the egg and it is prepared for laying. The vagina also plays a role in sperm storage. With the second preparation object too, the heart is cut open in the frontal plane with a sharp new razor blade. Here we see that the anatomy of the chicken heart closely resembles that of the European quail, but is much larger. The bird's leg and foot has a number of morphological differences from the foot of other vertebrates. The number of toes varies between two and four depending on the species but most have four toes. The leg is partly feathered and covered with keratinous scales. Claws are present at the end of the toes. Various species adapted to living in and around water have evolved a variety of different kinds of webbing between the toes. This concludes our overview of the anatomy and dissection of birds. We have seen that birds present a number of unique features among tetrapods, both externally and internally. There are clear adaptations for flight in the breast musculature, sternum, and the highly specialized wings and feathering. The anatomy presents numerous differences from squamates, but shares some features such as the gizzard with crocodilians, the other extant group of archosaurs. For comparison, we encourage you to watch our video on squamate dissections and diversity.